Troik, the largest uh, non-life insurer in uh, Scandinavia, just reported the annual report for 2023 this morning. I am here at Troik uh, with Head of Investor Relations, Gian Andrea Roberti, who will take us through the highlights from the reports. Um, you report 6.5% um, uh, growth in your insurance revenue in uh, Q4. Could you put a few words behind that? Thanks, Rasmus. So it's, uh, you're entirely correct. The growth is primarily coming from our private and commercial uh, segments. Um, and the current environment is primarily price-driven. Um, Inflation, in particular in Norway, Sweden, remain at a higher level compared to the Danish business, and therefore we need to act to, 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 to fight off inflation and to keep it outside our book. Okay, and also looking at the um, weather claims, you seem to be been challenged uh, through the whole year with the weather claims, uh, both you and uh, and your peers in the industry. Uh, could you also shed a little bit of light on that? Yes, um, it has been a difficult year. Uh, if you look at 2023, if you look both at the last quarter of the year and the full year, we are above our normal expectation for weather claims. During the summer, there were multiple events, uh, a highly unusual Scandinavian storm in August, but also multiple cloud bursts and even events in Southern Europe that hit our customers that were traveling there. And the first part of the winter, again, here in Scandinavia, has been, uh, the weather has been uh, somewhat harsh uh, with, uh, with higher uh, weather claims. But if you look at it, we're showing that on a, on a long-term long series, I mean, if you look at the last 15 years, it's a highly unusual year, the 2023. So we're maintaining our normal expectation for weather and also large claims uh, going forward. Okay, very good. And how are you sort of progressing on your 2024 strategy? It's a very relevant question because we have already published a date for our new capital markets. They will be on the 4th of December in 2024 in London. Uh, the main point of the of the old of the current strategy was the delivery of the synergies coming from the RSA Scandinavia, and uh, as per the end of 2023, we are producing 711 million of synergies. The target was 650, so we're uh, we're nicely above, but we're maintaining 900 million for the full year uh, 2024, which has always been the target. Uh, we feel like we're also progressing well, well with the other uh, main uh, part of the strategy, uh, in particular the, the overall discussion on the claims and on procurement, uh, and to some extent also on the new products. Obviously, there's been a period the last two, three years that uh, has been a bit more challenging than we initially predict because inflation came very sudden uh, and at an elevated level. So we had to work a lot with our price increases and to steer the business towards uh, towards the goals. But we feel like we're progressing well. Very good. And also in terms of uh, cash distribution, what can uh, shareholders expect from you there? We have a very clear uh, dividend policy. Uh, we're paying 60 to 90 percent of the operating earnings. Um, and I think we are at the high end of that also for the full year 2023. We are reporting a solvency ratio of 197, which is actually a fairly high level in the last, uh, if you look at the last two, two, two and a half years. We now just launch, as per Q3, we launch a 1 billion share buyback, which is about to finish these days. And we're also saying that later on, probably towards the end of 2024, we're going to come back and uh, look at the solvency position again. And, uh, you know, we have important profitability target, return on capital targets, so we're not known for amassing unnecessary capital and uh, therefore we're going to say something more at that point. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rasmus.